Have you ever wondered how crazy the networks are? How we upgraded from wired to wireless connections and letters to phone calls, text messages, and video calls? Moreover, how does the internet travel all around the world within a fraction of seconds? Welcome back to Genesis. We're back today with another exciting episode on the topic, how the internet travels across oceans. Before we proceed, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for regular updates. People think data is in the cloud, but it's not. It's in the ocean. The internet is a series of connections between servers and computers. The data from any one connection travels on a series of wires, switches, and cables until it reaches its final destination. From there, the receiving computer sends information back to its originator by following an electronic chain. The internet travels along the ocean floor in a network of undersea fiber optic cables. It takes only a few milliseconds for data to travel from one side of the world to the other, but that's not fast enough for some companies. All bits of data start out in New York. From there, they make their way to Hong Kong, across the Pacific Ocean, and then back across the Indian Ocean to London. When they arrive, they're reorganized so that the information can be read by a machine at your end. Thankfully, you can't see it happening. The trip takes about 100 milliseconds, the blink of an eye, but it's important because that's what allows you to watch videos instantly on YouTube or shop for clothes without having to wait for them to be delivered. While you were sleeping, the ocean was getting busy. All around the world, undersea cables are constantly transmitting trillions of bytes of data. Most of that information crosses international borders under the ocean. In fact, most internet traffic is 90% offshore, and 99% of all the international data is transferred through submarine cable-connected networks. But do you know that it's a technique that has been used for more than a century? The SS Great Eastern was the first vessel to successfully lay a transatlantic cable in 1886. Despite the occasional shark bite, Cables are still preferred over satellites because of their durability and dependability. Most of us now largely experience the internet through Wi-Fi and phone data plans, but those systems eventually link up with physical cables that swiftly carry the information across continents or across oceans. In the manufacturing process, high-speed mills wrap the wire in a copper casing that carries electricity across the line to keep data moving. Plastic, steel, and tar are added later to help it withstand unpredictable ocean environments. When finished, these cables will end up about as thick as a garden hose. The cables that connect the internet to your home and office are typically made of copper and plastic. They contain electricity to keep data flowing, and each cable can transport the equivalent of more than a million emails per second. The cables are made by heating up steel wire in a high-pressure furnace, which is then coiled onto a spool like putting cotton candy on a stick. The process is similar to how you might make jump ropes at home, but on a much larger scale. On average, every ship in a fleet of 20 ships, known as Multiple User Systems and Data Distribution Networks, MUDs, carries enough cable to make a single submarine cable. A year of planning goes into charting a route that avoids underwater hazards and has been carefully chosen to reach the most populated areas on the planet. The cables that carry the internet across oceans are incredibly resilient, but they're not indestructible. Currents, earthquakes, rock slides, and interference from fishing trawlers can pose serious risks for these underwater pipes that carry the world's data. To stay connected to the rest of the world, it's up to employees to make sure a cable's travel goes smoothly by working off massive maps and using specialized instruments. Each of these cables is designed to withstand earthquakes, ice, and fishing trawlers. They're also clearly marked by buoys to help ships avoid running into them. Even though new satellite and wireless technologies have been developed in the years since cables were first developed, cables continue to be the quickest, most effective, and least expensive method of sending information across the ocean. Although Google's efforts are still in the early stages, it's one of many businesses around the world seeking to increase the number of fiber optic connections they have buried beneath the ocean. It would be an enormous task. The oceans of our globe are already covered in an estimated 17 million kilometers or 10 million miles of such cables, enough to circle it roughly a hundred times. In a world that makes our jaw drop each and every day, there are more wonders to dive into. Were you aware of the fact that it's not in the clouds but the sea that carries all the internet data? Let us know in the comments section below. We hope you enjoyed today's video. 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.